All right, so today we are talking about time-based workflow rules. And it doesn't sound very exciting, but it really is. Um, this is one of the really powerful features that are available to you in Salesforce that helps you run things on a scheduled basis. Now, obviously, a lot of business that happens around the world happens on a scheduled basis, and there's lots of different scenarios in which this functionality could be useful. The easiest example that I can think of off the top of my head is sending email reminders on a scheduled basis. Uh, we're going to touch on a different, couple different topics. So those would obviously be workflow rules. Uh, custom fields will make a really basic trigger. And we'll also touch on business hours so that you can make sure that those updates happen during those business hours. Um, and this is really important because obviously you don't want to be delivering emails or sending updates and reminders in the middle of a weekend or in the middle of the night when a user is not going to be able to see them and they're not going to be able to act on that information. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Actually, I take that back. Before we get started, let's talk about the business scenario here. Now, I'm going to put a diagram up on the screen in just a moment, but what I like to do is I like to create these diagrams before I get started um, to kind of lay out what I need to build. And I want to build here a scenario that I actually just did in real life for a client. Um, they have basically a business scenario where when a lead comes in, they want to contact that lead within 24 business hours. And this is an important goal for their salespeople. So actually what we're going to be doing is implementing logic that when a new lead comes in, you have a 20 hour interval, and after 20 hours, it'll set the status to danger. And then if 24 hours pass, so four hours later, it's still in danger and hasn't been contacted, then it'll set it to not contacted promptly. So basically this is a little bit of logic to keep track of how promptly we are in touch with our leads to make sure that we don't leave leads in the queue and then they get stale and cold. So this is really important business logic. It's a, it's a real world application. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty simple to implement with this timeline. So let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, let's log in. And as always, if you don't have a Salesforce developer org, I would suggest that you get one. They're free and they're really handy for testing or trying out new ideas or just getting familiar with Salesforce if you're a new user. So I've logged in and this is my setup menu. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually set up some business hours. So I'll search for business hours, and I'll create a new set of business hours. I'm going to call them my business hours, and I'm going to make sure they're active. And I am going to use these as the default. So I'll keep my time zone here. And the first thing I have to do, this is a little bit tedious, is I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these 24 hours. And now I'm going to go through Monday through Friday and set these to 9 to 5. Okay, so now I've set those values the way I want them. I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, as you can see, I've made those business hours. And if I go into the business hours, I can even add or remove some holidays. Um, I can create new holidays, uh, assign them days, make them recurring, things like that, uh, which would be important to do because obviously no matter what country you're in, there are holidays that are observed, and um, if you really want your business hours to be accurate, it's important to put those in. But here you can see I've set, I've set on Sunday and Saturday we have no hours, and then during the week I'll be working from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and I've set these as, as the default business hours. So there we go, we've made our business hours. Now let's go back home, and let's search for lead, and we'll open up the lead fields. What we're going to do is we're going to create those two new fields. So the first field will be a pick list. And I'm going to call it prompt contact status. And I'm going to enter my own values here. So new danger contacted promptly and not contacted promptly. I'm going to make sure I use new, that first value, as the default value. I'm going to click next. I'm going to decide on my visibility for different users and different profiles. And I'm going to decide where I want to add it on which page layouts. And then I'll save. So now we've created that field. And what we have to do is we have to create one more field. So we're going to create a date field. And actually, it's a date time field um, because we want to be able to be accurate to the hour, to the minute. And I'm going to call this prompt contact by. I'll click next. I'll again select my visibility. 
I will choose which layouts I want it added to, and I will save. All right, so there we go. We've set up our business hours and we've set up our fields. Now, really quickly, in order to set the value of that prompt contact by date time field, we need to create a trigger. So over here in lead triggers, click on triggers and I'll click new. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paste in some code that's actually going to figure out those business hours I just made, um, create an interval of 24 hours, 24 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds times 1000 milliseconds. And then it's just going to add those to what, what time it is right now. So essentially every time we insert a new lead, we'll add 24 business hours to it and then we'll set the prompt contact by field to that value. So I'll go ahead and save this trigger and it should save just fine. And as it says, it's active, so it will be working from now on. All right, so last but not least, and this is really the important part, we need to set up our workflow rules. So I'll go ahead and type in workflow. And as you can see, we have workflow rules right here. We'll go ahead and create a new rule and we will choose our object. In this case, we're working on leads. I'll click next and I'll choose a name. So I'm gonna call it prompt contact checker. And I'm going to evaluate it every time it's created and edited to meet the following criteria. So in this case, I want to make sure that the lead source is equal to web. I'm going to insert that. I want to make sure that the lead status is open. And I want to make sure that last but not least that prompt contact status is either equal to new or danger because we only want to run it on records that haven't already become contacted promptly or haven't already gone over that 24 hour threshold. Okay, so there are my three criteria to begin with. As you can see there, uh, concatenated with those ands, which means all three of them have to be true at once in order for this workflow rule to run. So I'll click save and next. And here we are. So we can add an immediate action, but actually what we're doing is we're adding time dependent actions. So we'll click add time trigger here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do zero hours after, and then I select that field I made, prompt contact by, and I'll click save. So that means essentially 24 hours, which would be zero hours after that date I've set, we're going to add a field update. And I'm gonna call this one not contacted promptly. And I'll choose which field I'm going to update, which is the prompt contact status and I'm gonna choose which value corresponds. So that's not contacted promptly. Now I'm gonna click save. Now I need to add a new time trigger. I'm gonna click four, rather, hours, and I'm gonna do four hours before the prompt contact by. I'll hit save. And now we have to follow that same process where we add a new field update. I'm gonna call this one danger. Now again, I'll choose prompt contact status and I'll choose my danger and then I'll click save. And that's it. So just like that, what we've done is we've created business hours, we've created a couple of custom fields, we've created an ultra simple trigger to set the value of one of those fields. And then we've created this time dependent workflow rule that actually evaluates that date field we created and will change the status of another field based on whether or not we've hit that certain date. So as you can see, this is super simple. I'll click done, and there we go. Everything should be up and running. All we have to do is activate, and there we go. If you wanted to edit this or add more functionality, you need to deactivate it first, and then you can go ahead and edit it. But other than that, that's all it takes. And as you can see, it's a very simple, very quick process. This is a really flexible, really interesting solution that can be used uh, in many different ways. So I hope you go out and give this a try. Uh, maybe set it up within your organizations for you admins and developers out there uh, and see what you can do with it. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you found this video useful, go ahead and subscribe or give it a like. Uh, I'll be creating more content like this, of course, every week. And yeah, that's all. Thanks a lot.